Get ready for takeoff. Because it's the Take Flight Talk. It's your people. I remember from last week. It's James Moody. All right. We got Fitz. And it's Abby. We are the co-pilots of the Take Flight Talk. And we are alive. We are alive in this playoff race. Okay. We thought it was all over. We got embarrassed. Embarrassed on national TV. But we are alive. And we got the biggest game of the year for like the fifth straight week this Sunday. Abby, tell us how you're feeling. Um, I'm not going to lie. I was one of those people on Friday that was like, the jet season is completely over. <laughs> I like took a shot with like my coworkers. I was like, I even post on TikTok. I was like, cheers, because the New York Jets had a good season. Goodbye. <laughs> mm. And then, of course, like, um, I think it was Mosley who said that the um, playoff gods were looking out for us this weekend. And literally every team that we needed to lost. And so we are very alive and well. Um, I personally right now, I'm a little under the weather. But when it comes to the New York Jets, um, I feel good. I think I feel confident going into this week. Um, obviously, Mike effing White is back. Um, I'm not saying, again, I know when I say that, people are like, you know, he's not the answer to the problem. You know, he's not the long-term solution. I get all of that. He is our best chance to win, though, and that's why I'm hyped about having him back this week. Um, but yeah, I i mean, this is, we said for the last like four weeks, all of these were must wins. This is a must win to keep our playoff hopes alive. Um, I think, you know, the Seahawks and the Jets are basically in the same spot right now. They both need to win. They're on losing streaks and it's kind of going to be the test of who's just kind of going to come out on top and things like that. So who wants to take it next? Fitz? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, it's just so frustrating, right? Cause it's like a lot of me is happy that we're in the position that we're in where if we went out, there's basically a, a, there's a very strong likelihood to make the playoffs, but at the same time, I'm still upset. We're in the position that we're in right now. There's, you know, at the very least, you know, a conservative number of two games minimum we're coaching uh, you know, better play calling, better decision making at who was playing quarterback for us that we could have won. And that is the second Patriots game. And that is the Vikings game. And those two games, if we were to take Zach out against the Patriots and put in Mike White, if we were to go and uh, run the ball a couple times on the goal line against the Vikings, we would have won that game. And I think there's a debate to go and say Zach should have gotten pulled a hell of a lot earlier than he did against the Lions. And there could have been a chance for us to win that game as well. So it's it's frustrating. I think this this season has just been characterized by ups and downs um, at the quarterback position as well as uh, coaching. And for us to be in this position where there's a playoff opportunity with a lot of talent on the team, even though they have so many injuries, you know, it's good. And you got to find the, the, the silver lining there. Um, but ultimately, I mean, th this has been a tough stretch for us. Um, my biggest hope for, for the playoffs is that we just make it. After that, if we make a run, great. Not really expecting that to happen necessarily. Um, Mike White still has fragile ribs. <laughs> I mean, he broke his ribs in multiple places just a few weeks ago. Um, but to get these young guys to get a taste of the playoffs, see what that looks like, see what that feels like, make them hungry to come back next year is exciting. So at the very least, I'm just hoping for a berth. Woody, what you think? There's a lot of talk about the, the past. There's a lot of talk about the future. But right now, we in the present, okay? All those guys in the locker room, the entire organization, everybody, everybody, we're talking about this week because if we don't win this game, the season is truly over. Like, this is it. This is do or die. We die if we lose. Everything hinges on this. And, yeah, you know, people are going to talk about long-term solutions. I don't care about the long-term solutions right now. Right here, right now, we need the best solution, and that's Mike White. He's in there. He's in there, okay? And, Abby, you are 1,000, 1,000% correct that we are in a very similar spot with the Seahawks. We have been 6-3, and three, just like they were 6-3. and three. We have lost five of our last six, like they have lost five of their last six. 
Whoever wins this game will still be alive. They'll have a pulse. They'll be able to compete for a playoff spot. Whoever loses is done. And let me tell you something right now. This, a game like this, is the exact reason why Salah constructed this roster the way that he constructed it. He has gamers. He has guys who just love playing football, and they have chips on their shoulders. And guess what? DJ Reed's chip just got a whole lot bigger as he was snubbed from the Pro Bowl, okay? All of these guys have something to prove, and all of these guys, it's not hard work for them. They love this game. They love it. They're addicted to it. They they can't get enough of it, okay? That's what this roster is built on, and this is why. This game right here, they are going to want it more than Seattle, and that's why we're in for a treat this Sunday. I'm feeling great because we have the guy at quarterback who's going to do it. We have the coach that's going to lead these men, this leader of men. And then we have the talent at the right positions to make it happen. This game, that's all that matters, is this one game against Seattle, whooping Geno Smith all up and down Seattle. We are going to do it. The New York Jets, what a time to be alive. So I got a question for you. Um, just kind of conceptual question. Obviously, we're on the road this Sunday. How would the crowd react if this game was in MetLife to Geno Smith? How would the New York Jets fans react if Geno Smith was marching into MetLife? That's a great question. I feel like they would give him respect. I, I, feel, I feel like I've seen a lot of places, you know, on the internet, everybody's saying like, oh, we should have kept Geno this whole time. Like, oh, you know, Geno's an example of, you know, give QBs time, which is wrong, but that's how they feel. And I think they would be they would be happy. They would they would they would uh they would cheer Gino. I agree too, just simply because um the journey that he's had as a player, especially the last couple of years, I think he's really grown um since he was with the Jets. And I think Gino Gino's a pro bowler this year as well. So you kind of have to give him respect as well. I, I also think he's up for like I think it's comeback player of the year as well. So I would have no hate or animosity. You know, all that stuff was like years ago. And look what's happened to us since. We haven't done <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing exciting. So it's possible. I, I would like to believe that that would be the case because I think that's probably the rational uh, response to him coming in. But um, as Jets fans here, we, we tend to lack uh, rational thinking. And I feel like we would probably clown him pretty hard. Um, <laughs> But this game's exciting. So, you know, obviously we're going to be covering the Woody three here in, in a minute. Um, we're going to get into the score predictions before that. Just going down the list here of uh, the Seattle games, they give up a lot of points. This team gives up a lot of points. My goodness, they've given up um, multiple touchdowns in every – like th there's not a single game here except against Arizona in week six that – points-wise at least, was a very impressive performance by the Seahawks team. At least three touchdowns, multiple games with 39-plus points given up. Um, this is a rough one. I mean, what do we think our offense is going to look like? You know, Mike White's coming back in. He's, he's a few weeks off uh, with broken ribs. Um, who knows if he's really at 100% or if we slipped a little Benjamin under the doctor's door to say, hey, do what you got to do here. Uh, we need this guy this week. Um, what do we what are we expecting out of this offense with the with the hurt Mike White? I, I I'm I'm hyped. I think that we are about to kill it. I mean, Mike White, he's in his starts, he has only had one game, literally one game, where you know he struggled. He had four picks, but mm -hmm. even that game, he had 200 plus yards. The boy is moving the ball. Doesn't it doesn't matter if if the other team is catching it. Our team is catching it. The boys moving the ball. So what I can say with absolute certainty is that we are going to move the ball against this defense. And we are going to talk about why I think that is in the Woody three. But I think that we are going to move the ball. We're going to score. All right, I'm tired of this, you know, lazy narrative that, oh, Mike White can't score touchdowns when he's literally the only QB on the roster that has three touchdowns in a game, multiple games. 
over the last two years. Joe Flacco can't say that. All right. Strevler, I mean, I don't even want to disrespect Strevler. You know, he came in, he did his thing. Zach Wilson can't say that. He's never had three TDs in a game. All right. Mike White, we're going to put up points. We're going to get yardage. I'm excited for this offense. And I know there's nobody more excited. We're going to talk about this also, but nobody's more excited about this than Bam Knight, who, you know, he went from hero to zero. Yeah, and I don't want to get too much into it because I know we're going to talk about it with the Woody 3, but the rushing game, as long as we can get that going, I think we're going to be absolutely fine. We just have to literally run it down their throats. I read a stat earlier, and I think since Brees Hall left, I think we've only had two games where we've had over 100 rushing yards. That I don't think <clears> – <throat> Sorry, I told you I was under the weather. Um, <laughs> no, um, what I was saying, though, is um, I think we're going to well go well beyond that uh, this week against Seattle. Honestly, I'm not – it sounds really bad. I'm not even threatened by their defense at all. They're mediocre at best. No shade. But <laughs> no, Max shade. We're, we're shading this whole – we're cooling off. We're throwing the shade. I agree with you entirely. Um, you know, as long as Mike White plays the whole game. You know, this is something we got to talk about, too. For whatever reason, on God's green earth, Joe Flacco was listed as QB2. Um, you know, this is something that Woody has brought up in the past, and sadly, he's right about this. Um, you know, Mike White gets hurt a lot. You know, he does He does have, you know, whether he's prone to injuries, <clears throat> I don't know if I would say that, but relative to the percentage of games that he's played, he's been hurt in a lot of them. And if you look at that, that second hit that came in in that Buffalo game. I mean, I, I think I'd still be on the ground there in Orchard Park. But, um, you know, th this is th – that was – he took a beating that day. Yeah. You know, so he's dealing with fragile ribs. And God willing, you know, we've got a rib protector around his chest. We, I'm sure he's going to be well protected um, when it comes to preparation personally. But is he going to be well protected by this offensive line? I mean, the Seattle Seahawks defense, again, I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, but our offensive line has been kind of a little bit hot, cold. If he's able to stay standing <laughs> and not, not re-injure his ribs, I think this is going to be a very high scoring game on our side, on their side. I can't say as much. I mean, Gino has been playing very well. There's no question about that. But you know, when you've got Sauce Garner, DJ Reed, uh, like we said, the biggest pro ball snub, um, Quinn and Williams is back. He's still a problem. My goodness, the first few, the first drive mm -hmm. of him being back against that Lions game was that electric or what? Um, I think Quentin, uh, if Geno Smith doesn't know about Quentin Williams, uh, he sure as hell will by the end of this game. But uh, my my biggest fear is keep Joe Flacco off the field. If Flacco enters this game at like mm -hmm. any point, even if it's garbage time, the game's over. We're already up forty points and there's two minutes left. I don't want Flacco coming into knee the ball. I do not even trust him there. I need him off of the field in the locker room. Uh, that is my my largest fear at all. Do we have any final points where we hop into score predictions? Hopefully they elevate Chris Trevler. Yeah. Um, you know, day of, just like they did before. Uh, I'm definitely not as high on him as you are, Fitz. I know, you know, you think he might be QB1. Uh, but he can, you know, he's, he's a gadget. He's a gadget dude. You know, Taysom Hill has – value you know he, he he gets burned on uh you know on the saints and i think strevler could do the same thing i mean he's inarguably inarguably a good runner mm -hmm. right and he can hit some throws sometimes so you know i think we should definitely elevate him even if we don't use him elevate him and just get them thinking like oh uh you know what are they going to do just put him on the field because once he's on the field now the defense is is confused they're nervous so I think um, that's only to their benefit to kind of, you know, get some special packages with Strebler going. So I just want to clarify something here, because that, that is this is a world of misinformation. Uh, <laughs> yet again, Woody is spewing here in no in, in, in no NFL. He is not a QB one. Chris Strebler is not a QB one on any NFL team. I do not think that. <laughs> I never said that. That is nonsense. But what I did say is Chris Strebler without question, gives us the best chance to win a football game if Mike White's not playing when it comes to our roster. And that is what I've been advocating for since Mike White got hurt. That is it. So do not go and spew this whole nonsense because he does struggle with the deep ball. He does. He had, he had, he was 10 for 15, uh, you know, last Thursday. He, he threw the ball relatively well. Obviously he missed 
a wide open touchdown downfield. But besides that, he ran for he, he ignited a spark in this offense that did not have to exist for over three and a half quarters. So relative to that, if it is Zach Wilson's little baby boy, or if it's Chris <laughs> Traveler, the fullback that's got a half arm, I am taking that 10 out of 10 times. So make sure you understand, Woody. I ain't saying he's QB1. Well, I agree with that. I agree with that. Play the fullback if uh, if White's hurt. Well, I mean, I had fun watching Traveler play because he came in like with eight minutes in like the third quarter, I think. And I was three. glued to the screen. Oh, three. Um, I, I told you I was out. I was drinking, okay? <laughs> I feel great. like an eight after a couple of Tito shows. I know. <laughs> and that's just after we did a shot, too. So, I mean, I but I was glued to the screen after because um, earlier in the day, I just kind of had it on my phone. I wasn't missing anything, though. I went to go up and grab a drink. They're like, we'll tell you what happened. I come back, and they're like, three and out. I'm like, well, Shocker. could have just stayed up there. <laughs> Yeah, well, a, Abby, I, I need to hear your score prediction for this Sunday. I mean, this is – we got a 4 o'clock game. You know, we're finally getting a little bit of respect with the, the timelines not being <laughs> boxed yeah. into to 1 p.m., even though this is arguably one of the points where we deserve the least amount of respect, <laughs> losing five of our last six. But uh, the networks know that we've got our Mike White back. Uh, no, we we're got, only at 4 o'clock because it's in Seattle. That's the only – that's the only reason. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, like it has nothing to do with yeah, anything. That's it. That's so, amazing. 1 o'clock uh, uh, Pacific time still. Yeah. Uh, but, Abby, what, what are we thinking here? What what are we thinking? Uh, for so, quite a few things. Um, I mean, Gino's thrown five interceptions uh, since the bye week. He hasn't been uh, as good um, at the start of the season. I know that Seattle um, Lockett was out. He – was practicing today, so he should be back. So you got Lockett and DK Metcalf to kind of look after. I'm not really too concerned about that. Go ahead and try DJ Reed. Go ahead and try Sauce Gardner all you want. I actually, um, I'm predicting Gino probably throws two picks in this game, to be honest. You want to air it up? Go ahead. <laughs> and so I had 21-16 Jets. I don't think Seattle scores as many. Mm-mm. Wow. Um, I'll I'll be a little surprising. (laughs) No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Because to be 100% honest with you, I think this defense is going to show up and show out. I saw the fire. You know, both of you know, I've been down on this defense. All right. I've been saying how they haven't gotten turnovers. They're last in the NFL in turnovers. But what I saw, Q did his absolute best to try to give this team a spark in that Jags game. I mean, he gave them the ball inside the red zone. All right. He did everything he could. And then of course, when you give them the ball in the red zone and they get negative yardage in route to a field goal. I mean, it's like, yo, what more do I have to do? Like, I, you know, I, I can't run it in my damn self. And I, and I really think, you know, that complimentary football really messed up with, with Cuba with Mike White. If, if we don't get in the end zone, we're at least going to get positive yardage in those scenarios. So I'm expecting a great performance from this defense, and I'm expecting a great performance from the offense. Mike White, those boys are about to be humming. I actually had 27 to 16 <laughs> New York Jets. I think this is actually going to be a two score game. I don't think it's going to be close. It's not going to be a competitive fourth quarter. I think the Jets are going to, you know, get hot early. And then just run it up on them. All right. This is one of the worst run defenses in the entire NFL. So I think when they play with the lead, then we're going to see Bam. We're going to see MC. And uh, that, that's that's really it. 27-16. Well, you know, it's funny because I'm kind of – I had a number already in my head that I'm sticking with here. And it's funny because it's very close to two different things you said. Abby, I am 100% in alignment. Gino's pick, uh, Gino Smith will throw two picks in this game. Um, Woody, I'm expanding your numbers out three points. I've got 30, 13. Um, I think this is going to be a very, very strong offensive and defensive performance. Um, DJ Reed is playing with a chip on his shoulder, not making the pro bowl. Um, you've got, um, this defense as a whole is playing for something different this week. And Mike White being back. I mean, we could talk about the statistical side. Um, as Woody has and, and uh, will be uh, in the Woody three here about the whole offense's performance. 
uh, when he's on the field versus not. But outside of that, leadership. Zach Wilson has zero leadership. I had a, a vein almost pop out of my neck in our last podcast talking about the lack of leadership from Zach Wilson. And that, I think, is going to be another factor here where when Mike White is on the field, the entire team just performs better. The entire team has higher uh, a will. They want to be there. They are fighting for their leader of this team. Zach Wilson does not provide that. Mike White does. So I think having him gone for a few weeks and being reminded of what it's like when Mike White is not at quarterback, they're playing with something different here. we got a few days extra rest. They're going to come in here looking for blood. I think this is going to be a bloodbath. I'm saying 30-13. I mean, it's hard to argue with that. I mean, Garrett Wilson, and I quote, I quote said, I would go to war for that boy. You know, that's how these people feel. I mean, you know, football is an emotional game, okay? And that loyalty, that type of camaraderie, you know, that's what Mike White does. You know, that's what he brings, where they will give everything they have in their coach, Salah, like all of that just gets magnified because that is contagious. You know, you see Mike White playing through broken ribs. Then Garrett Wilson steps up. Okay, from there, now you got Elijah Moore being like, hey, I, I can't be left behind. I got to step up, right? And that just trickles down, trickles down, trickles down. It starts with the head coach, and we know we got that. But it just gets magnified as, you know, these important cogs in the machine like Mike White, like Quinnen on the other side of the ball. I mean, DJ Reed, he's going against his former team. You know, everyone's talking about Gino. Gino. When, you know, I mean, does Gino even have a pen? I don't even know. Is he writing back? Who wrote, you know, it, don't, it doesn't even matter. DJ Reed has a chip on his shoulder. Forget about Gino, all right? It's, this is DJ Reed's revenge game. And, yeah, I, I think I think we're going to see something from this from this defense. You know, and Salah also um, attributes, like, Pete Carroll as his mentor. So it's kind of like the mentee, mentor type of uh, thing, too. Um yeah, I just uh, – I don't, I don't care about the – you know, a lot of people like, we were five and two with, with Zach and you're one and whatever with Mike White. I don't care about that. I don't know what it is, but the offense performs better with Mike White no matter what. You can just see it. And I get that the locker room, these are all professional players. They go hard for everybody. They want to win. I don't know what it is when Mike White gets in there. The, the dynamic completely changes. It, it, it's, it's very obvious. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. So I don't care about the, the stats or anything like that. I'm like, even if, like I said, we could have lost all the games. Even if we lost to Chicago with Mike White, I would have still had him put in there. I mean, 92 yards of offense against the Jacksonville Jaguars, not acceptable from someone we drafted number two overall. And then of course, obviously the article came out this week. Sala said it's not very factual, but that we're supposed to move on from Zach Wilson at the end of the season he says he's still gonna play and i'm like how where <laughs> what position a holder <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's the report that jay glazer broke mm -hmm. and i feel like that's kind of been taken a little bit out of context because in like if you listen to what he said he didn't say this is an inside report mm -hmm. he kind of it seemed like he made a prediction but either way you're right and I think Jay Glazer's right, but this is not something I think. I think if if I'm if I'm uh, Salah, if I'm you know JD, I'm thinking let's get through this season, let's finish this out, let's see what we've got, let's see what's available. I think Zach Wilson's future in the Jets is mostly going to uh, come down to what does our off season look like. Mm -hmm. You know, not to go and jump jump the gun. We're going to talk a lot more about this uh, when slash if the Jets season ever ends this year before February, <laughs> uh, it will. Um, but maybe it won't. Maybe, maybe it won't. Maybe. I'll be watching a Jets game on my birthday weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. But uh, but I think I think there's a lot of things to figure out before his future is. So I don't think there's any cold hard decision made on him yet. They're trying to figure out who the hell do we play this week? What do we do in the off season and go from there? But um, that all being said, there's a guy on this podcast <laughs> that is looking at three things before every Jets game. Is that – it's not me. I said a guy who can't be Abby. <laughs> is that Woody? Is this, does Woody do that? Oh. We got the Woody three? Do we got yes. the Woody three coming? 
Well, there are indeed three things that I'm looking at in this game. And I told you, right, that, you know, we can't look at the past. We can't look at the future. We are looking right here, right now. So this week, three things that I'm looking at. Number one, the White Knight returns. And this is huge, obviously, because we know what everybody's stats look like with Mike White versus Zach Wilson. And, and the boy, Mike White, this season is averaging 317 yards per game. We know for a fact, we literally know, like there's no doubt that the ball will move this game. All right. Now we just need to punch it into the end zone, which he, he has done as well. But, you know, we've had recent troubles with that. Number two, Quinn in time. All right. He is back. The only game he missed this season is the only game that we didn't have a sack all year. Okay. Now we came back his first game back. He had a strip sack. Not only did he get a sack, he also gave us the ball in the red zone. I'm telling you, the pressure that, that we're about to put on these boys in Seattle is crazy. And they they have two rookie tackles on the outsides. They've been pretty stout. Both of those tackles have actually been really good. They're way better than what they were projected to be. But their weakness is in the middle of the line. Who's in the middle of the line? Quinn and Williams is Quinn and Williams, boy. All right, you better double team him, triple team him. And whatever you do to reinforce the middle, then you got Michael Clemens. You got Bryce Huff. You got Carl Lawson on the outside. <laughs> so it will be Quinn in time for this New York Jets defense. And third, but certainly not least, we are running out of time. And Abby put it so eloquently before about how we have not been rushing well without Brees Hall. We have not. We've had no games. No games where the rushing game was the catalyst for our success. And honestly, I don't think this game is either. But luckily, we have Mike White to get us started. All right? He will be the jumper cables that gets this running game alive. And once we're alive, Bam Knight, MC, they're going to do their thing. And, and, and I know... I've, I've been I've been talking about it, talking about the stats. I mean, Bam Night, Night and Day. Bam Night. I mean, we we were talking about oh, this is the greatest you know debut in Jets history. He he you know he's a legend. Whatever whatever we were saying about Bam Night, nobody was talking about him after Zach Wilson came in, and this is why. So now that Mike White is back, you can be pretty confident that our rushing game will also be back to life. So those three things, those three phases of the game complement each other, and we get that done. Simple as that. Well, I'm all doing Quinnen's dance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Got to pay well, that, I, man. <laughs> I am, uh, I'm very excited for, for this, this, this game. Um, I have not been excited for the last few games, uh, mostly because of the quarterback situation. Um, but Mike White's here. And as long as, as long as he's healthy, there is no reason. Cause I mean, look, 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 let's look at this. You know, Mike White, if he starts this game and against the dolphins, the dolphins may be in trouble with two availability week 18. I mean, who knows? I, it's, it's just a question mark. Um, and if that's the case, we're going to the playoffs because there is no chance in hell. There is no chance in hell that the Patriots finish off the season beating the Dolphins and the Bills. That is a, there is a 0% likelihood of that happening. I'm sorry. So considering that, because obviously that needs to happen. If they went out, we're screwed. Um, but there is no chance that that happens. And there is, you know, there is a small chance. Like if the, yeah, Bills, zero, zero. If, if the Bills sit their starters next week, which is very possible, if they wrap up the number one seed in the AFC, then the Patriots would have a very easy path to winning that game. Take out the third stringers, bring in the third stringers of the bills. They will still beat the crap out of the Patriots. The Patriots stink. The Patriots stink. And we should be embarrassed. Like this is so pathetic that we went 0 for 2 against those clowns because Zach Wilson is a little baby boy in his carriage getting fed <laughs> by his mommy and his mommy's friends. Apparently it is so pathetic. The performance he did, the Patriots are not a good football team. And I don't care if it's the second stringers against uh, the Patriots that week. I would assume that the, the starters would maybe at least play a little bit first quarter, maybe first half, even if things are locked up just to keep them you know, warm. But either way, I, there's no way that the Patriots go 2-0 and 
against these teams. Agreed. Okay. All right. There's a small chance, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Very small, but no. Patriots right. aren't good. Our Patriots aren't good this year. I'm still mad about those two losses to them, though, too. <laughs> both of them were were horrible. Literally, both of them should have won, could have easily won, and Zach Wilson. I had an out of body experience when that punt return happened in that second oh, game. Yeah. I literally, like, I was, I was sitting there. And it was, we, we went uh, fourth down. I'm like, all right, we'll go to overtime and like maybe we can get a field goal. I said, yeah. And, and, like, and then they kick that or they run that back, and I'm like, I, I literally, my body was just like, <laughs> I, was like, like I saw my face. I was watching that game by myself. I saw my face somehow. I, I saw my actual facial expression when that, that kick return happened. And I, I just I, – I still don't want to think about it or talk about it. I was streaming the game in Costco and stepped in the wrong spot, and then all of a sudden it was like 10. It was like the game was over. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, Not um, good. Yeah. I do, right, okay, we'll talk about one more, I do want to talk about one more thing just because I hate when uh, how our fans are sometimes. But, you know, the DM or whatever with Zach Wilson's mom and all mm. of that, stop it. Yeah. Like, that is so not necessary. And that's one of the things I kind of can't – like I always say, the Jets fans are savages. They really are. Um, but, yeah, that's definitely not okay. I mean, he's a kid. He, honestly, he's still a kid too. Yeah. And then to go with his mom. His mom has nothing to do with this. His whole family has nothing to do with this. Like, come on, dude. Yeah. So, sorry to take a damper before we get off here. <laughs> no, no, no. I agree. I agree. Definitely savages in New York. Um, it is it's a tough place. And, th and that's actually one of the big reasons why I, I didn't think he would succeed here. Um, is that I didn't think he was built for it. And Fitz, you've heard me say this. His, his very first interview after being a, a, a Jet they're like, hey, like, how you like in New York? And he he said, oh, I'm I'm always getting cut off, like when I'm trying to drive, like you know, all the traffic, you know, guys guys keep uh cutting me off, and I'm like, oh, oh, he won't be able to survive here. Like he he just, you know, like you said, he, he's a kid, and uh, you know, this is this is a place that will chew you up and, and spit you out, and uh, he he has been spat out. You know, they they really did him a disservice by keeping him in that Jaguars game as long as they did. Mm -hmm. um, because I, you know, the the way he's wired, the way that that the fans were reacting anytime he he, he took a breath mm -hmm. on the field, crushed him. Crushed. Yeah. I mean, I mean, how did they expect him to to do anything out there? So, um, yeah, His confidence yeah. is shot. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been seeing. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, a few Jets fans are like, yo, we should sign uh, IK at Kampali. We should put it, we should activate one day them. deal, <laughs> you know, like, you know, and that, that's savagery, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's New York for you, like, you know, they out, they out here bringing out all the skeletons from the closet for sure, for sure. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I mean, there's, there's no question that DM was a low class move, uh, but at the same time, I'm sorry. I don't really feel too bad for the Wilson family. If anything, if anything, I'm trying to figure out what the hell the DA of New York's doing because on live television, the New York Jets got robbed from the Wilson family when we went and drafted him second overall, giving him millions of dollars to do jack shit. So honestly, no, Mayor Adams, the district attorney, we need to bring in the heavy hitters here because this is robbery happening right before our eyes. So I'm sorry. I don't really feel too bad for Mrs. Wilson. I mean, they were on a family trip in Cabo over the summer with Zach's iconic picture in front of the boat like this. <laughs> Clowns. Oh, my God. <laughs> my mouth is hurting from smiling. Fitz, you out here, you are you are one of a kind. Uh, but so are these Jets. So are these Jets, one of a kind. We all got them winning, okay? I, I really am so excited. We are We are back. We are back in Mike White. Will we'll bring us there on offense. The defense will do their thing. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about the Seahawks defense. Um, you know, their offense is whatever, but I, I think we have the tools to shut down that offense. On defense, 
you know, read that Woody three because they are very much like our defense. As a matter of fact, like you said, Salah is, is the mentee, right? He was on the team or, or part of the organization when they won that Super Bowl. Um, so they do actually run a very similar scheme. They just don't have the Pro Bowl pieces to make it run the way that ours runs. So let's get this dub. Let's get this dub. Any any final thoughts, Fitz? I'll pass it to you. I know you usually have a lot, a lot on your mind. Yeah, usually not. It's just kind of just the air gets filled up and I just kind of word vomit. So I'm going to pass it right back down to Abby to shut us down. Um, I mean, it's crazy how this a weekend turned out with, you know, now we're like our chances were to get in the playoffs are still alive. Um, but the only thing I'm focused on is winning the next two games. I'm not even going to focus on the Patriots or anything like that. Win the next two games. And that's where our head needs to be. So I think that's where all our players heads are at right now. So let's just focus on that and keep it pushing. Wow. There it is. <laughs> that's all we need. That's literally all we need. Okay. We need to get you in the locker room because that's all they need as well. Abby, close us out. All right. I'm going to leave you how I always leave you. One word and four letters. That's J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. You already know.